Okay, uh, firstly, um, I'd like to thank Annabelle for facilitating this lecture. And also, I thank um, audiences for joining uh, today. And ladies and gents, uh, let me start uh, with my presentation. Uh, this is my bio for audiences uh, with whom I've never met. Uh, some notions here. Uh, what I will talk today is based on my academic and career experiences. I am not a strong blockchain expert, but I have expertise on telling you uh, how to see what's going on uh, in automotive industry and what will likely to happen from policymakers' perspective. I used to study at LSE a British university that supports politicians and policymakers worldwide. My major was environmental policy and my talk will be based on what I was taught about 20 years ago, long time ago, but uh, it still works. So I, and I used to work at hedge funds uh, as a senior analyst looking at Asian petrochemicals and the electric component sector, especially in South Korea and Taiwan. The time was just after the birth of Apple's iPhone and iPad. So I witnessed uh, Nokia's uh, rapid decline and creative destruction of supply chains in the region. What I see in automotive industry now is a kind of deja vu of what I saw 14 years ago. So I call it smart formalization of automobiles. As Annabelle said, the recent book I co-authored with Chris Barringer, Mobi CEO, will be published in uh, China this fall as well. Uh, I'm devoting myself to expand Mobi community in Asia. What I want to tell you today are summarized here. I will tell you the overview of what's happening in automotive industry and explain you the importance of blockchain for mobility. I will emphasize that decarbonization is not just about making electric vehicles, EVs, but also about creating new economies. Visualization of carbon footprint is a starting point of seizing opportunity for the monetization and blockchain is a key technology to enhance traceability of uh, carbon dioxide emissions, CO2 emissions, and increase transparency and credibility of such mitigation activities. The core topic of sustainable development is social inclusion. I will tell you about natural rubber traceability as a use case of ethical sourcing. Finally, I will tell you about opportunities for sustainable mobility in Asia. The main purpose of today's lecture is to see if carbon footprint traceability and ethical sourcing sound interesting to audiences and to gauge the feasibility to launch a new MOBI working group on sustainable mobility in the future. So any feedbacks after the lectures are very welcome. Here is the menu of the lecture today. Uh, starting with the overview of the industry. World's vehicle production has been declining. This is not because of COVID-19 since it started two years ago. Let me tell you that supply side issue is behind the downturn. That's so-called diseconomies of scale. As a vehicle manufacturer, the more cars you make, the less profitable you are. So you don't want to produce more conventional vehicles with ICE, internal combustion engines. In fact, many autom auto manufacturers have been shrinking some of the factories or even closing uh, uh, some, some plants uh, in the last couple of years. Why? It's because transaction costs started increasing faster than the duration of fixed costs in mass production. Here are the, um, the key transaction costs at auto companies. Blockchain can be a good solution to reduce transaction costs. It can reduce asymmetric information, especially in used car transactions, and making consortium for standardization like Mobi, we reduce the costs to hire expensive experts on user experience and digital transformation. Supply chain traceability with blockchain will reduce the quality related costs. And now what is interesting is carbon footprint traceability with blockchain. 
it's not just about reducing the cost, but it's also about creating new values and economies through decarbonization. So we are now having many newcomers that seek for opportunities in next generation mobility. Those newcomers with success in smartphone industry have advantage in procurement of semiconductors and have provided new user experiences to customers. Value propositions they will likely to approach will be completely different from the incumbent players in automotive industry. I feel the fit is moving of those potential game changers. Again, I have deja vu about creative distractions that I had seen uh, when iPhone was born. Supply chains of materials and electric components had dramatically changed and they shifted from vertical integration to horizontal specialization. Now a fierce competition to win the Apple car business is in front of us, which looks similar to what happened at smartphones. What are the new value propositions and the new user experiences around EVs? Mobility users want not only to transport the people in the cargo, but also manage energy consumption efficiently and eco-friendly. The overlap of the two is decarbonization and they are interested in circular economy, energy saving and green energy. Solutions for decarbonization are made through interaction between Internet of Things in physical world and the Internet of Values in cyberspace. <clears throat> Connected EVs and the batteries play as sensors in IoT and the digital replica or digital twins provide the solutions and make EVs profitable and sustainable in smart grids or virtual power plants in smart cities. Tesla has been actually doing many of these as our new players will do the same or something close. Blockchain is important since it can make a car's digital twins secure and reliable. On blockchain, a digital twin is tamper-proof and its uniqueness or identity can be protected. Then it is possible to assign property rights to the digital twin or digital assets. When transferring property rights between the digital twins, cryptocurrencies are used as media of exchanging the values. With AI and the big data, digital twins can transact values autonomously and machine-to-machine -machine payment becomes possible. Vehicle identity VID is crucial for such creation of trust for digital twins. And the digital twins sending feedbacks to physical cars make next generation mobility, such as case and mass mobility as a services, efficient, profitable, and sustainable. Mobi has made a standard of a vehicle ID VID, which is a rule to make a secure digital twin of a car. We will also have digital twins of people, money, such as CBDC, energy, and CO2 in the near future. An aggregate of these digital twins forms a digital twin of a city. So building a smart city is to make an existing city smarter, especially by changing people's behaviors through utilizing the feedbacks from the digital twins. Vehicles collect a lot of data on cities, therefore, many mobility players now focus on smart cities. This is how I understand about the importance of blockchain mobility for smart city. And it is about human-centric approach to make societies better. Okay, now, moving on to decarbonization in details. We need to know about carbon pricing first. I'm sure that you see the world in the news every day. There are three types of carbon pricing. Emission trading scheme is a mechanism that policymakers set a CO2 reduction target on companies and allow them to buy or sell the ability to do that as carbon credits uh, in the market. Carbon tax is to directly establish a price on CO2 emissions in supply and value chains. Companies are charged a data amount for every ton of CO2 they produce. 
The third one is carbon border adjustment mechanism or CBAM. It is a kind of carbon tax. Carbon tax I just mentioned is a taxation on domestic companies, whereas CBAM is a green tariff on the company in a foreign country where carbon pricing is not implemented or less stringent. CBAM is a mechanism that the European Commission will first introduce and an implementation proposal is expected to be published in June this year. Carbon pricing initiatives in the world cover about 15% of total CO2 emissions on the globe in 2020. European EU ETS is the biggest one and Japan's carbon tax is the second. We will see a big change this year. Just last week, China just introduced a national ETS. The scheme only covers the electricity industry first, but it will be the largest CO2 coverage on the globe. Germany is expected to introduce their own national ETS along with EU ETS this year. Japan government just announced that they would plan to introduce ETS covering automotive and electricity industries, but in late 2020s. <clears throat> Carbon pricing is introduced in 47 countries at the moment and is spreading fast. In most of the cases, ETS markets are very active in electricity supply industry as of today. But as automotive and transport industries are increasingly connected to electricity industry through increasing EV grid integration and life cycle assessment of carbon footprints, mobility companies need to enter the new carbon credit markets for monetizing decarbonization activities and make businesses sustainable. And what we've got to focus now is US. The new President Biden issued an executive order on, on uh, environmental policy last week, and it included the word social cost of carbon, SCC. Uh, nationwide um, carbon pricing will be implemented and more details will be rebuilt within the month. But I just found that uh, uh, the administration issued uh, executive orders um, an hour ago, so I haven't read it, so maybe um, it's revealing the detail. I'm going to read it after this presentation. But anyway, Mr. Biden promised during the election that he would introduce a carbon adjustment fee at the border as soon as he would be elected for the president. <clears throat> so it is for sure that the US will also introduce the same green tariff as European CBAM. For companies and industries exporting to US and the EU, they can't ignore this issue, even though they are not under stringent regulations in their home countries, because they would likely be charged the green tariffs, or even they cannot export goods to these regions. Stringent environmental regulations drive innovations. A good example is US Muskie Act in 1970. The most stringent regulation on air pollution in the world was implemented then, but Honda was the first auto company that cleared it with a fuel efficient CVCC engine equipped on civic passenger car in 1973. The company ignited the globalization of Japanese auto industry. Well then, who will be the winners in the new normal of global mobility industry? Innovations will be centered around decarbonization for sure. Before discussing about decarbonization, please let me introduce you a great Japanese economist, Professor Kaya, an energy economist at the University of Tokyo. He formulated the so-called Kaya identity that decomposes the CO2 emission of a country 
into four factors. The Kaya identity has been widely introduced by environmental policy makers, such as IPCC, since 1990. Applying the Kaya identity for industry and the company uh, uh, for industry and the company should look like this. CO2 emissions can be decomposed to production volume, material efficiency, energy efficiency, and the carbon intensity. Carbon offsetting can be incorporated when we discuss about achieving carbon neutrality and the carbon negative. In the context of decarbonization in mobility, measures to reduce CO2 emissions in the key factors include increasing mobility as a services, such as sharing services and the public and commercial transports to reduce volume of new cars productions. Material efficiency can be improved by building the circular economy. Energy efficiency increases by saving energy. <clears throat> carbon intensity will drop by utilizing renewable energy and or carbon-free hydrogen. In terms of carbon offsetting, a company purchases emission allowances or carbon credits from the market. Policymakers urge industries and the companies to drive decarbonizations for accelerating digital transformation, achieving SDGs, creating jobs, and creating new currencies. So decarbonization is not just about making more electric vehicles, but also, and more importantly, about creating new economies centered around EVs. Again, policymakers want to drive innovation by implementing stringent regulations. I said new currency. What does it mean? Mitigation activities or efforts to reduce the CO2 are rewarded and you are entitled with carbon credits. This is an incentive mechanism designed by policymakers and the costs to decarbonize business activities can be reduced with the mechanism or even you can make money if you do make more efforts such as saving more energies by investing on new facilities and using more green energies. So this is about money creation. Therefore, with the surge of blockchain and distributed ledger technologies, carbon credits can be now regarded as a new digital money like CBDC. Decarbonization is a pursuit of creating new currency which is much more universal than global fiat currencies and, and even CBDCs. A huge opportunity to create new economies is there. I'd like to look into circular economy more and share this European Commission's proposal <coughs> that was um, announced on 10th December last year, or just a month ago. EU countries will likely ask companies not only to increase recycling and reuse more batteries, but also to report the carbon footprint of the batteries. This is called a life cycle assessment, LCA, of CO2 emissions. And the LCA declaration requirement will start from July 2024. Companies have to get ready for meeting this stringent regulation just within three and a half years. Building a circular economy is a part of decarbonization. It is very tough for many companies, but it also opens up opportunities for some companies 
with expertise on materials. What materials will be the next to be required LCA reporting? This is a list of the materials in order of high CO2 emissions summarized by European Commission. Many materials for batteries are listed in the top group, <coughs> but others include carbon fiber reinforced plastics, CFRP, and aluminum. CFRP is increasingly used as a light weighting material for body parts, like chassis. And also it is a lot used as a structure material of hydrogen storage vessels on fuel cell vehicles. This last week, Teijin, a Japanese chemical company announced that they would start disclosing CO2 emission volume from manufacturing CFRP to its final disposal from the coming April. An increasing number of European car OEMs are starting LCA assessments and the Teijin seemed to follow the trend with anticipating that LCA of CFRP would be required by EU countries like LCA of battery is. Nissan also announced last week that the new rogue SUV produced in Japan and US would introduce a circular system of aluminum parts. The company also announced yesterday that they will commit to manage the life cycle of the vehicles. Such movement of building circular economy has been accelerating very fast, <clears throat> particularly since the last month. This is because of not only by aggressiveness of European Commission, but also by the addition of US and China to the global trend of decarbonization. Application of blockchain for building a circular economy has started in upstream industries. A famous project is what German chemical company BASF has been doing in Canada. The rest chain is a blockchain consortium on plastics. So there could be many blockchain systems uh, to build circular economies from now on. And I think Mobi could be a platformer to standardize <clears throat> not only supply chain traceability of parts and materials, but also carbon footprint traceability by collaborating with upstream and the downstream and also logistics industries. Renewable energy traceability is also a very important topic to be explored. Mobi's EV grid integration working group deals with this topic and this is indeed very exciting. Coloring of renewable energy or visualization of sources and the flows of green energies are materialized with blockchain. And there have been pilot projects of peer-to-peer real-time transactions of values in CO2 reduction. The pictures here are the projects conducted in Japan. Energy supply industry has more experiences on blockchain application. As the number of EVs, including electric motorcycles, will increase rapidly, automotive industry will have more opportunities to collaborate with electricity industry and build new economies backed by decarbonization trends.
wireless charging technology is what I am very fascinated with. I expect within 10 years time, the new technology together with the energy traceability will accelerate peer-to-peer uh, -peer and machine-to-machine -machine transactions of renewable energy and the carbon credit tokens. Okay, let me move on to the second big topic of this lecture, sustainable development and ethical sourcing. Sustainable development, everybody knows it, I think, but it's very difficult to say what it is in simple words. Social inclusion is a core topic and the target of sustainable development as defined by Brundtland Commission in 1987 and the United Nations in 2015. It is intergenerational and international issues to be solved. So it is about the environmental issues that tend to be carried over to next generations and digital divide that is derived from problem of accessibility to data in the current digital age. Environmental issues are, in many cases, the, the outcomes of a people's low income situation or poverty. Wealth is increasingly accumulated with values on data. Blockchain is regarded as a key technology to solve these issues because the technology can reduce transaction costs and redistribute wealth by data sharing, which in turn reduces the digital divide and increases financial and social inclusions. United Nations says there are six things blockchain can do for achieving sustainable development goals, SDGs. One of which is ethical sourcing and consumption. Ethical sourcing or responsible sourcing has been centered around conflict minerals, such as tin, titanium, tungsten, and gold. Companies in the US using the so-called 3TG materials are required to submit due diligence report on the procurement under the Dodd-Frank Act since 2010. From this month, companies in EU are required the same. Both US and EU regulations state that minerals in African Congo and the surrounding countries are regarded as conflict minerals. In the future, the mandate will likely include cobalt, which is a key material of lithium ion battery for electric vehicles because about 70% of global cobalt is mined in Congo. So many auto companies, therefore, are very aggressive to build a blockchain system that traces cobalt. ESCO sourcing under regulation pressure will likely include other materials than conflict minerals. The most likely one is natural rubber for tires. UK government will attempt to introduce a new law, which will require due diligence from businesses using key forest risk commodities, including natural rubber. In order to kick out illegal deforestation by building supply chain traceability. Alongside the measures set out in the government report, UK will capitalize on its forthcoming presidency of 
the United Nations Climate Change Summit or COP26 in Glasgow this November and called for global collaboration with other countries. European Commission has been investigating on natural rubber traceability for more than 10 years. So the movement by the UK government will be potentially a global one. Natural rubber is a key material for automotive industry since, since it consumes 70% of total global production of natural rubber, mainly for manufacturing tires. 87% of natural rubber were produced in Asia in 2018, in which 63% were only from Thailand and Indonesia. There have been pilot projects to build natural rubber traceability by companies dealing with tires and natural rubber. Itochu of Japan is one of them, building natural rubber traceability with blockchain in Indonesia. The system enables the traceability and also includes token economy in which local producers and dealers are rewarded the tokens as incentives when providing the data. Tires with traceable natural rubber can be sold at a higher price than um, normal tires because of the trend of ethical consumption, especially by young consumers like those in Generation Z this year, this, these days. A part of the price increase is transferred to the producers as tokens. Social inclusion increases with redistribution of profits or wealth. There are several consortium and uh, NGOs that attempt to standardize the technology for traceability, but such activities are slow. Therefore, Mobi could take a leadership in standardizing the blockchain technology. Blockchain technology to trace natural rubber is more promising, in my opinion, than cobalt, because cobalt-free resume ion batteries are increasing in the market, and the tires and natural rubbers are not replaceable like engines in electric, electrification of vehicles. This is the final topic, opportunities of sustainable mobility in Asia. What I want to tell you as an Asian board member of MOBI is that there are many opportunities for blockchain mobility in the region. And especially blockchain mobility can improve social inclusions or sustainable developments in Asia and also Africa to where we export vehicles, including used cars. EVs are not only four wheels, but also two wheels and three wheels in Asia. Because motorcycles are essential for population dense urban life and also for island life, especially in Indonesia. Electrification of vehicles it's much faster at two wheels than four wheels. And e-scooters have been supporting women's social empowerment in countries like India and Vietnam. A batch of swappable batteries equipped on e-scooters can play 
a key role as a node in electric vehicle grid integration, EVGI. This should be an interesting use case, especially in Taiwan, Indonesia, and Vietnam, where number of two wheels ownership is large. Vehicle identity, VID, will be a base for autonomous delivery, including drone transport and used car and used parts transactions, especially in China and Africa, respectively. Lastly, secure and reliable data on low temperature management will increase inclusiveness in vaccine distribution. Asian hot climate needs that application with blockchain. Mobi sees carbon footprint and escrow sourcing are important use cases as mentioned in the white paper of a vehicle identity standard, which was released last week. If your company or organization are interested in joining Mobi and discussing about the future of mobility with blockchain, please let me or Mobi team know. We are excited to work with you. So thank you very much uh, for listening today. And uh, this is a QR code uh, of my um, LinkedIn page so that you can question me later. Thank you. Sanchiro, thank you so much for speaking to our audience today. I just want to repeat something important you said that decarbonization is not about making EVs but creating new economies, which is what Moby is trying to do. Thank you for, for saying that. Uh, our next lecture will be in two weeks on smart transportation systems from the point of view of an Italian researcher and professor, Stefano Ferretti. So until then, be sure to sign up for our bulletin, become a Moby member, as San Shiro said, and check out the release of our vehicle identification standard part two by visiting our website at dlt.mobi. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.